Hello and welcome to another episode of your favorite talk show, Stephen Korean Perspectives. I am your host, Stephen Alexander. And I'm your host, Korean Harris. <laughs> and in today's episode, we have Alexandra Wills and Maddie McGallard from APSU Center of Service Learning and Community Engagement with us to talk about the special opportunities they bring to our campus. And also in today's topic, Stephen and I will discuss how to succeed even when you are failing and the importance of being engaged inside and outside of the classroom. That's right. So stay tuned, guys. You don't want to miss this because you're in for a good, what did I say? Group. Gr you make good. 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 Good, good, <laughs> good treat. <laughs> you watching SKP. <laughs> SKP. Stephen Korean Perspectives. SKP, Stephen Korean Perspectives. Are you ready for this? As college students, we often want to succeed in everything we do, but sometimes that does not always happen. This situation sometimes make it more difficult to be engaged in and out of the classroom. So Stephen, how can we as students not give up on our aspirations when times get hard? Good question. So I will first start off by stating, succeeding even when you are failing. So there's three attributes to that. Okay. For me, reevaluate yourself, examine the situation, Always do the best you can do and keep pushing. So with that. Okay, tell us how we okay. can evaluate ourselves. So with re-evaluating yourself, mm -hmm. why is this happening to me? Sometimes we have to figure out why is this happening to me? A lot of times when things happen to us, we say it's our fault. Sometimes it's not our fault, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We have to examine, okay, what's going on? What's causing this? And then that, that goes back to examining the situation. And sometimes when we're in situations that we have no control of, or we just don't know where to go, we have to seek help. And with seeking help, don't be ashamed to do that, because sometimes we get ashamed to seek help. Exactly. You know, I can, I can, I can say that vouch for myself, sometimes we do. But don't be afraid to do that. And always do the best you can do. So sometimes we, we think that we can always give more. Or someone's telling us, we're not doing this, we're not doing it. But if you know you're giving the best that you can do and you're doing the best you can do, that's all that truly matters, if you get what I'm saying. That's I know all exactly that truly what matters. You're saying, because you know how much you can put into each exactly. situation. But sometimes, it, I would say it's still good to have someone to even push you. Like, push you. you know you can do more than that. You know that's you can right. do more than that, too. So, because sometimes some people may push you. It's still a it's, good it's thing. Still a good it's thing. still a good thing. And I'm glad you mentioned pushing, because sometimes people won't push you. So, if people don't push you, what you gonna do? Just sit there? Somebody please push me. I'm a baby. No, you. we grown. We're good and grown you in college. You need that in yourself. You need you that in yourself. That's right. Push. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, we got do this thing. Push. 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 Okay, we pushing each other. <laughs> and then being engaged inside and outside the classroom. What motivates you? What keeps you going? What keeps you? What keeps those juices flowing? And look, listen how he said what keeps you. You. Not your parents. Mm -mm. Not your friends. Not your cousins. Mm -mm. You. you. Because I know, like I said, I have so many family members who just feel like they need their parents to push them. And a lot of people probably think my mom pushes me, which she does, but I have a mind of my own. <laughs> my mom did what she can do for me, and now that I'm an adult, she's letting me do my thing. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's a, it comes a certain point to where you have to do your own thing for yourself. Yes. Mama ain't gonna be there, okay? Not all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, what do you want to learn from your college experience? And then, you determine your own outcome from that. So what do you want to learn while you're here? You're not just here to get an education. You're here to get an education. That's the number one most important thing. But you're also here to make connections. You're here to grow. You're here to learn who you are in this process. Because I, I would think if you're going to spend thousands of dollars, <laughs> thousands, you're going to take advantage of every opportunity. And with that, you're going to de determine your own outcome from that. What is your outcome? So what about you? So for me, what I have is have an I won't quit mindset. So you have to tell yourself you're going to get through this and you're going to find a way or make one to get out of that situation that you're going in. And remember that setbacks are temporarily, so they're not going to always last. We face so many things like through college and even in our day life, but you have to have that I won't quit mindset. Okay. Like, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep pushing. And also watch someone else who struggled but kept going. Mm -hmm. So everyone, well, majority everyone have seen the pursuit of happiness with Will Smith. He was a single father <laughs> of a five-year-old right. child. He was homeless too. Yeah. But you know, he was determined to work at the 
business, Wall Street, yeah. Lincoln, he kept, he kept pushing. pushing. And you know, that's something that can inspire a lot of us. Like even though he was homeless, he had a he was a single father, he kept pushing and he finally started working for that company. Mm -hmm. So they can let us know like anyone can really, even though that's TV, that's still a mm -hmm. true story. Well, we TV, <laughs> but, we, but it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely the truth. And next, create a wallet. And what I mean by that, on your wallet, ask yourself, what do you want to achieve from this goal in the first place? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to school. What do we want to achieve? We want to achieve our degree. What we want to do with that degree? We want to work here. We want to work there. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to make something out of our lives. We want to be an entrepreneur. Like, start your wallet on what you want to do. Last, call someone who would talk you out from quitting in a situation. Oh, I believe some people that. have at least one person you could talk to. Like for my mom example, you know, we go through things, you know, you can always call your mom and be like, mom, I'm not feeling this. Right. I don't know. And what she did, she always give me that push to keep going. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that one, I promise you, you have one person that you can go through. That's with, right. Go to a friend for, or family that's right. for that push. For that push. And most of the time, like you said, with the moms, we already talked about this. Talked about this. They already know. They already know. <laughs> they already know. I'm Moms and and also, I'm glad we mentioned this. If you don't have any friends that push you, that means your circle has, but my mom has always taught me this. That means you have overgrown your circle. And sometimes that is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. When you overgrow your circle, you have to find your own self, number one. And you have to keep pushing for yourself. Yes. And once you've pushed for yourself, you find something within you and you find new people and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You have to push within yourself, like we and said. And people are gonna come in your life for a period amount of time. You don't know how long, but and then they go. they go, they go, they probably weren't meant to be there. So <laughs> that's right. Take a break. <laughs> but coming up, we'll have Miss Alexandra Wills from APSU Center, a service learner here with us. Stay tuned, you're watching SKP. You can help support Austin P. students who don't have enough to eat by donating to the Save Our Students Food Pantry. The Save Our Students Food Pantry is looking for soup, pasta, canned meat, canned beans, peanut butter, and fruit. You can drop off your donations at the food pantry on Home Avenue. It's open Tuesdays through Friday, 8.30 until 4. For more information, call 221-1620. A campus reminder from Austin P. I'm from Clarksville, Tennessee. Fort Knox, Kentucky. Jackson, Tennessee. Hawkinsville, Kentucky. Memphis, Tennessee. From Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. Little Rock, Arkansas. St. Louis, Missouri. From Gaffney, South Carolina. Seattle, Washington. Jeremy, Haiti. I'm from Tres Pontes, Brazil. Chicago, Illinois. Hawaii. Phoenix, Arizona. Roselton, Georgia. From Odessa, California. I want to be a neonatal nurse. An athletic trainer and accountant. Playing the NFL. An interior designer. Physical therapist. Law enforcement officer. An orchestra technician. Social worker. Physician. Politician. Psychologist. CPA. Yes, for sure. 
worker, nurse practitioner, physical therapist, restaurant owner, a politician, start my own business, veterinarian, elementary school teacher, the NBA player, cardiovascular surgeon, anesthesiologist, a businesswoman in Nashville, social worker in Miami, Florida, politician in Washington, D.C., Colorado, in Orlando, Florida, Houston, Texas, in Chattanooga, Memphis, Tennessee, Seattle, Washington, in Nashville, Tennessee, San Diego, California, Nashville, Tennessee, New York City, New York. San Diego, California. Atlanta, Georgia. Nashville. Los Angeles, California. New York, New York. Memphis, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Orlando, Florida. Los Angeles, California. Baltimore, Maryland. Clarksville, Tennessee. Carolina Beach, Carolina. Philadelphia. St. Louis, Missouri. Clarksville, Tennessee. Welcome back. I'm your host, Stephen Alexander, alongside my co-host, Corinne Harris. Our guest today is very involved on our campus. She is the director for the Center of Service Learning and Community Cen um, Service Center here. I just messed up. <laughs> All messed up. I don't know which camera to look at. Okay, for a student, um, <laughs> what am I, student, uh, center of a student, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Thank you for coming today. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. <laughs> we welcome you to our show. Thank you for coming. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good, good. Doing good. So, Ms. Wills, can you give us a brief description of your job description? Sure. So, I'm the director for the Center for Service Learning and Community Engagement. Okay. And our office is located um, on Austin Peace campus next to the Baptist Collegiate Ministries building, so across the street from Johnny's. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Everybody knows Johnny's is. So um, over there, we, uh, our whole point is connecting students with the community and getting them volunteering, using their academic interests to really connect them with specific different nonprofits working on community issues. Okay. So that's kind of our theme. Okay, so can you explain to our audience what exactly is service learning for those who don't don't have any idea what it is. Yeah, sure. So service learning is a tool that we use in academic classrooms. So there is a course that is using a service learning tool. And that means students use 12 to 15 hours of volunteer work that's directly tied to the outcomes for that course, the learning outcomes. So you may have a um, public speaking comm course who, instead of giving speeches about um, how to make a pancake, they are volunteering at the animal control and giving speeches on why people should adopt and not purchase animals. So okay. it's giving them real world experience, it's helping out our nonprofits in the community and just making the class more intense experience. Oh, okay, that interesting. is interesting. Yeah, you yeah. Take a service like yes. <laughs> in what ways do you help students engage with doing community service around our local community? Right. So we have lots of ways that our office connects students within the community. Um, we have a partnership with the local United Way. Mm -hmm. And we have an online um, platform where anybody in the community, but also Austin Peay students, can go on and search all the nonprofits within the county and search for um, something that might interest them particularly to volunteer with. So we help facilitate just general volunteering. Um, we also get students out of the state of Tennessee to go volunteer on alternative break trips. Um, we have two nonprofits that we run out of our building, which we'll hear about more in a little bit. Um, so students can volunteer actually on campus um, and get a great experience if they don't have cars or can't get out into the community. Um, and we also connect students through service learning classes as well. Now, are student organizations able to come and do service learning projects together, or is it individuals come and want to do a service learning project? Sure. So if a student organization is all taking the same class, they mm -hmm. can do a service learning project together. Um, but you've got to be attached to that academic course to be doing service learning. But an organization can come and volunteer as a group within our nonprofit organizations or within the community. We have groups all the time that come in and, and want to do something together there is a team bonding, but also give back to the community. Okay. So what should students take away from their experience as a service learner? Sure. So students who are in service learning classes really get that hands-on real life experience when they're doing service learning. So sometimes we have students as a freshman who are taking a class in their 
hopeful major, and they realize right off the bat when they're in it that this is not something for right. them, right? Yeah. So we want to determine that as early as possible into their academic career, or it can say really reaffirm for them that this is what I want to do with my life. I'm actually getting a chance to try it out, and this is really great. So it's kind of the less intense internship where we're really trying to help the community. It's very reciprocal as opposed to like an internship. Right. It's very kind of right. focused on that. Yeah. So on the APSU website, it talks about the center mentions the program is to support and encourage collaborate between curricular and co-curricular programming. What exactly right. does that mean? So we kind of think of ourselves as the like matchmakers. Mm -hmm. So curricular volunteering is, is academic. So it's attached to your academic interests and we're really trying to engage you in what you're taking classes on so you're more likely to continue with your major and graduate and continue on with the career. And then co-curricular is outside of the classroom. It's those extra pieces that just engage you as a citizen, make you more aware of the issues that we have going on in our community and just make you like a well-rounded person. Okay, okay. So you guys offer service learning courses for students. How would you say the courses have impacted the student? Oh yeah, um, it's usually a pretty um, significant impact right off the bat. So we have students who do service learning courses um, and they will continue to volunteer way after the course is finished with okay. that nonprofit. Um, if they feel really um, empowered and passionate about that, that nonprofit, some of our students will get jobs with those nonprofits afterwards um, and will continue to work with them, um, or they will be connected to a nationwide nonprofit and they'll may perhaps leave you know, our bubble and go off into uh, across the country to volunteer with or, or to work for nonprofits. So I don't think students think about nonprofits as a career path, but right. it is, it's, a, it's, we have them everywhere, everywhere all the time. Right. So they're desperately yeah. wanting people who have that, that good heart and all that energy um, to come work in their field. So that's a, that's a huge, huge impact. So how do you guys try to mold the students to be better when they're working with any, you know, when they, when they leave? Right. So when we get students in, um, as freshmen, we have the Freshman um, Service Project. And so right off the bat during Apex weekend, we um, have right around 200 of the freshman class come in and do this huge volunteer service project where we're meal packaging meals that go out into the world to stop hunger. Um, so we're trying to instill that as soon as they get here. And then over the course of their time, you know, we have huge campus events called like the big event, which mm -hmm. is coming yeah. up in a little bit. So students can see faculty and staff and other students volunteering and the, the importance of that and how fun it mm -hmm. can be. It doesn't have to be like this negative experience. Um, we, so we do big campus events. There's Plant the Campus Red that's coming up as well, which has got the history of Austin Me kind of in a nutshell there. Mm -hmm. Tornado came, Crush Campus. This campus came together to rebeautify um, for the graduates who were about to graduate on a campus mm -hmm. that was just kind of destroyed. So <laughs> yeah. we didn't want that for them. So it kind of brings that whole um, giving back feeling, feeling. To, to being a governor. Right, yeah, right. So can you share some of your favorite service learning courses that have run in the past? Yeah, so uh, we have some really exciting ones going on. Um, we have um, a accounting class that's actually going on right now. That's a spring class and they provide free tax preparation for the community through a federal program called VITA. Mm -hmm. So um, they are doing they're open to the public, anybody can come in and get free simple tax preparation done. Um, so that's really great, students put in long hours and they're there learning how to work with people mm -hmm. um, with taxes, which sometimes is not it's the not most easy. comfortable yeah. situation. <laughs> um, so they're getting really good experience working with people um, that they don't know and, and things like that. And then um, we have a honey bee biology and beekeeping class, which is just really fun that does okay. service learning as well. Well, it looks like they're telling us to wrap up. Yeah. And this time I'm going to try not to, to stumble, okay? <laughs> that, was, that was ugly, wasn't it? Okay, guys, we must take a quick commercial break. But coming up, we will have Maddie McGallard here with us. So stay tuned. You're watching SKP. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks.
Welcome back. I'm your host, Corinne Harris, alongside with my co-host, Stephen Alexander. We have Maddie McGillier, who is the VISTA coordinator for the SOS Food Pantry and Garden, to talk about what the food pantry has to offer the students. So how are you today? I'm good. Good, good. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks so for having So first, us. tell us what exactly does SOS stand for and what is the purpose of the food pantry? So SOS stands for Save Our Students, um, and that name um, actually was coined by some students back in 2011 when the pantry was formed. Mm -hmm. And um, Save Our Students was the first uh, food pantry on a college campus in Tennessee. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's, it's a big deal. Um, so the mission of SOS mm -hmm. is to support students and their families during times of need. So um, we provide supplemental food assistance, um, we provide clothing items, household products, um, hygiene products, things like that for students to have um, during times of need. So how much of an impact would you say the pantry has made on our campus? So I think it's, it's had a really huge impact. <laughs> um, just in fall uh, 2018, we had about 500 visits to the pantry, um, and that's new and returning users. Um, and then during that time, we gave away about 7,500 food items alone, and that does not include anything from our thrift store. Wow, mm -hmm. that's really good. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, how do you guys create an environment to make students feel welcome? Because sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. students it's may not feel too welcome. They may be on right. edge. So how do you guys ease that? Right, and it, it can be a very awkward experience. Um, so we just want to make students feel as comfortable as possible. Um, so we try to make it like a shopping experience. Um, so students can come in and, and pick out what they need. Um, in a lot of other food pantries, things are already um, picked out for people, um, like pre-packaged and distributed, um, and we definitely don't want to assume students' needs. So we let them pick out what they need for themselves and their families. Um, like we have music going on in the basement, which is where the, the pantry is located, the basement of the Center for Service Learning. Mm -hmm. um, and we have our volunteers there always to help students and to answer questions and, and just make it a, a comfortable experience. So you guys have a garden. We do. Who came up with that idea? <laughs> um, I think some students like recognized that there was um, a need outside of just non-perishable food items. Um, so they thought of the idea of the gardens to like offer um, fresh produce and um, to kind of um, like show students that you can incorporate fresh produce into your meals mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be difficult and yeah you can like grow your own produce. And you also have chickens, yes. we right? Do. We do have chickens. We have someone yeah. special here we with do. us today. <laughs> we do. Uh -oh, uh -oh. We, we have eight chickens. Eight chickens. Yes, six of them are ready to be adopted. Um, this is Sparkle. She is hey, Sparkle. She's one of our chickens who has been adopted. Hey, um, she's Sparkle. been adopted by Victor Feltz um, in Student Affairs. So yeah, she's she will give us about 250 eggs. Oh, for wow. the pantry. Um, 250 so, yeah. eggs? Yes, in a year. Wow. Yes, in a year. Um, uh -oh. And that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just like a rough um, estimate. But yeah, we have um, a Help a Hen program through the food pantry, and anyone can adopt a chicken for $50, and um, that $50 goes towards food for the chicken for one year. Um, so anyone can do that. Um, the link to sign up is on our website. Um, and yeah, it's that you can name the chicken. I will like send you bi-weekly um, email updates, send you photos, and like um, if you adopt a chicken, you can come by any time and, and visit the chicken at our garden. We should adopt so a chicken. We should adopt should. a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> at first when you said adopt a chicken, I was like, oh, why do I have to take home? I was like, oh, no. I take care of the chicken. <laughs> no. <laughs> we we <laughs> put in all the effort. You just... Just adopt it. Yeah, yes. just adopt it. Mm -hmm. okay. And I come back, it could be like our child. Right. <laughs> it, every, we know everything needs a little yeah. TLC, tender <laughs> loving care. I want to know how would you say the garden has, I guess, contributed, contributed to, to the, the pantry? pantry? Yeah, so the garden, um, we have about 27 or 28 garden beds. Mm -hmm. So we have a garden at our office at the Center for Service Learning. We have about six beds over there. And then we have about 2021, 20, um, a couple streets over on York Street. Um, and over on York Street, um, we have like um, the food pantry grows their own food. And we also have our adopt a bed program. 
So that gives students an opportunity to adopt a bed. It's completely free um, and they can grow their own produce um, for themselves and their families. They just have to put in the work and the time for it. Um, but we adopt out, I think, six beds oh, wow. for that. Um, so it's, it's a really great opportunity because we realize um, produce is very expensive at the store, so we want to give students that opportunity to right. be able to grow it for themselves right. and, wow. and take a chunk out of the, the grocery bill. Wow. So we're like, mm -hmm. we want to do some adoption. So y'all, yeah, <laughs> you, you can do that as well. Just get a chicken, get a, get a garden bed. Y'all can definitely right. do that. <laughs> In what ways does the Clarksville community contribute to the food pantry? Yeah, so we work with um, a few food agencies, uh, especially Mana Cafe Ministries, yes. Loaves and Fishes. Um, they are our main um, donors and we collect from them a couple times a week and they give us like fresh produce, um, a lot of non-perishables that help sustain the stock at the pantry and we have a lot of um, community donors as well who are really um, enthusiastic about the pantry who want to help. So. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So we got to wrap up again, guys? <laughs> okay, we got to go again. <laughs> well, thank you for coming and yeah, uh, we can have the chicken we want, we want, we want Sparkle to come back. <laughs> Hi, Sparkle. Say bye. Hey, Sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, right. thanks for tuning in today to SKP. You can watch us weekly. Every Thursday, if you have missed previous episodes, you can always watch them under APSU slash TV on YouTube. See you guys next, next week. Next week, with more news and entertainment. And I always remember, too. <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go be. be.